Hi guys, in this video I'll talk to you a little bit about add rank. Hopefully we'll have some time to go through the whole thing in class as well. But for now, please uh, stay tuned with me. I'm not going to take too much of your time, probably 20 minutes in max. First of all, I would like you to watch this video. This video duration is about five uh, or six minutes, let's say. It's about the ad rank and basically uh, just focus whenever they talk about the maximum bid, the ad quality score and the extension. So these are the three main themes when we're talking about an ad rank. So if anybody tells you, um, how about my search ad rank? The first thing you want to talk about with the search ad rank, uh, which is a very important thing, of course, as I showed you earlier, I, I ran a, a search, a quick search on uh, buying sunglasses. And definitely the ad rank does play a very important role. Uh, you can see here, I don't have the ads, the other ads anymore. This is what I tell you, the average cost per click or the, uh, the, 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 the dynam how dynamic. Because uh, in fact, some advertisements, they have an ad schedule. At certain times of the, of the day, they won't show their ads because they know everyone is busy and, and nobody will buy, be buying sunglasses. Not as many customers will be actually seriously buying sunglasses at around this time. Uh, they will be at work. So probably this is why I don't have now three different ads as I showed you earlier in the previous video. I have only one ad right now running, as you can see. The rest are just uh, uh, organic. So you know, I wanted to show some different ads <laughs> to show the ad rank importance, but over here we have only one ad uh, showing. So and the maximum bid is an important uh, um, uh, element or factor, as well as the ad quality score and the extension. Let's take a look at the three of them. What is the maximum bid here? This is the maximum bid that you specify on your keyword. Okay. So if you are richer, it is better. This means that you can spend more money, but actually it's not that easy. As I told, as I, 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 we talked about or discussed in the previous video, it has to do with how much money this customer is estimated to bring me back. So the, the average order value or the average revenue that coming from this transaction also uh, logically supposed to control the maximum bid. Okay. Quality score. Quality score is a metric to, to determine the relevance of your ad. The relevance of your ad to the user. So some components of the uh, click-through rate, relevance and landing page quality. So with the quality score, we're talking about the three main uh, 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 elements. The, 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 the click-through rate and the relevance and the landing page quality. So landing page quality has to do with the SEO. So if you're asking me, why did we spend most of our time at the very beginning of the semester to talk about uh, search engine optimization and traffic and all that and on-site uh, and off-site optimization, of course, it's very important because over here, we are presented with the same theme again, the landing page quality. So how, the, the, the very first step of uh, planning a campaign is understanding the objective, then understanding uh, uh, which some of anchor products, some of the products that you would like to uh, uh, um, use for the creatives, for the campaign. Then the strategy, of course. Now, when you are, the, you know that these are the pages that I'm going to use, so you may as well focus on improving their quality, the quality score of the landing page, improving their quality by adding uh, with Yoast plugin, adding uh, very nice descriptions, very uh, well written product names with very uh, popular keywords, uh, with potential keywords uh, that has a, a potential hopefully relevance with the keywords that you bid on, bidding on. or. Uh, you're having the landing page. Landing page is related to, it's on your site and it's related to the ad group uh, uh, in your uh, Google Ads. Actually, it, it, it's related to uh, the keyword and the ad copy. Yeah, to the ad copy of your ad group. Okay, then you have the relevance. Here, relevance, I'm going to talk about it in more details as well as the CTR. Then the Google Ad extensions, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, call out and site links as extensions. Okay, 
how does Google select ads to enter an auction? This is very important. If a search term was plumber course and you have an ad group, it has two different keywords. The first keyword is plumber course, which is plumber course, plumber course, and it's a broad match. And then you have plumber and it's an exact match. In this case, broad match will be selected. Do you see? Plumber course, plumber course. Usually exact match is stronger than broad match, but in case where there is an exact semantic match of the phrase, then broad match will be, collect it will be selected. This is the importance of broad match. You cannot just say, I'm gonna put all my keywords as an exact match because exact match usually overruns broad match. Not usually. When there is an exact semantic uh, 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 match here, plumber course, plumber course, broad match will be selected over exact match. But when the search term a plumber course and in my ad group keywords, I have plumber course as a broad match and plumber course as an exact match, then what happens is exact match will be selected. So there is no need, there is no need to, what does that tell you? What does this tell tells you? There is no need to put the same keyword as a broad and the same keyword as an exact. I mean, it's, it's not, it doesn't make sense. Why? Because then all the time when this exactly matches this, you will end up with exact match being uh, uh, selected. Uh, it could make sense. In fact, this is not phrase match. Uh, this is exact match. Yeah, so in this case, yeah, I can understand why it could make sense. Um, not really. I can't find why because if you if you add by uh, or join a plumber course, it will still this will still be all right. Uh, a cheap plumber course or affordable plumber course or professional plumber course, for example, so that would be uh, that that will still be uh, um, prompting this. So this is shows showing you the importance of diversification of your keywords. So some of them should be as a broad match, like here, plumber course, so that you can make it be smart. So the broad match over here, plumber course, will actually match with the plumber course over here, but maybe the message might be a bit more broad, but it's okay. Uh, while the plumber here, exact match would be plumber, uh, join plumber training course, this will, this exact match here will be prompted, selected, if the search term was join plumber training course, uh, obtain plumber certification. So this might have the chance to be triggered. A plumber here, a plumber, oh, okay, so it's double M now. Okay, uh, for consistency, let's keep it as is. Plumber training course. Plumber training course is the search term and your ad group keyword will have plumber course. So here's plumber course. So if this is an exact, it won't, it won't uh, pull it out and trigger it. And plumber certification course, plumber certification course will also uh, will not uh, trigger it. But uh, if let's say you don't have that much competition and hopefully you have higher chances to be showing on the on the SERP, then Google will take a look at the ad rank. And the ad rank, as we just talked earlier, it has to do with the maximum bid, plus the quality score, plus the Google ad extensions. This is like, you can't miss this. This is all free. Google ads extensions are free, so you can't miss this. So this is in the pocket, I would say. The maximum bid, it depends on so many different factors other than only your budget, but also the estimated average revenue. And then the quality score also here has to do with the landing page quality. So you should be able to um, make sure you improve this. And this also correlated with the click-through rate and relevance. Let's talk about the ad rank factors here. So the quality of your ad or the quality score here or the ad quality has to do with the 
click-through rate. Click-through rate has to do with the auction time measurements of expected over estimated click-through click rate. So what is the expected over the estimated? Uh, also has estimated has to do with the past click-through rate. The ad relevance, how much the ad is related to the search term and how much is it the search term is also related to the uh, um, landing page here and then the bid itself and then the expected impact of the extension. So the extensions, you should always have your extensions done nicely. Let's break it down. Click-through rate. Click-through rate of your ad, this is for the quality score. The click-through rate of your ad has to do with the expected click-through rate, right? The expected click-through rate has to do with how much is your quality of your landing page, the relevance of the keywords, and so on. Your display URLs past click-through rate. That's it true because anyway, this is in fact is the expected over the estimated. So estimated here is the past click-through rate and it is within a geographic performance. So within a certain geography. So maybe your clicks aren't as great. Okay, let me let me tell you something. For example, let, let's tell you the story. For example, you are opening up in the southern part of the United States and you're running your campaign. Logically, if you are hiring a very good person, they should be the geography, they should just uh, uh, add the states, run it in a states that you can uh, provide services and you have branches, for example, or, or, or. So you can sell in. So you have a higher click-through rate there because they know that you're operating not only uh, you're operating in the southern states and they know they are southern states, so they will be encour encouraged to click. Let's say that you haven't done that and you missed on tuning the geography on your Google Ads. What will happen then? What will happen is people might mistakenly click on your ad or might not. So if you're doing, for example, a conversion, a kind of like a strategy where uh, the bidding strategy is a, a, a conversion, um, this might not even affect the conversion. Let's say that what happens is you're running it and then uh, for some reason, uh, not for some reason, for a very particular reason that you're not servicing uh, customers in outside the southern uh, United States, uh, what happens is people will not click on the ad. So when people will not click on these states uh, at all compared to the uh, southern region, uh, then well, uh, definitely uh, Google Ads is smart enough to uh, compute the uh, click-through rate uh, based on also the geographic performance. That is really good from, from Google because Google could just uh, not do that. You know where the problem is? The problem is if there is no indication whatsoever in the ad that uh, you are only available in the southern region, let's say, and you only sell or, or provide services or products in the southern region, and people from outside the southern region click on your ad. So they click, you pay for their clicks, but their clicks are not getting you no monies. So what happens then? If you're not getting any monies, nothing, then definitely it's a waste. So geographic tuning is very important in your uh, in your advertisements. And this is why even in my entrepreneurial strategy course, I tell my students, what is your uh, geography? Where is your headquarters? Why is your headquarters there? And uh, then wh what, what markets you would like to target and so on. So this is quite interesting, isn't it? Relevance. Relevance here, uh, For relevance of the keyword and re relevance of the ad, the text, the ad text relevance. So the keyword should be relevant to the ad copy, the text in the ad copy, in the description, in the title, and uh, also should be related to the relevance with the, the with the with the search query. So the search query is like a triangle. So the search query should be very much related to the keyword that you use in the ad group. And then also the matching these headlines and descriptions in the text relevance to the search keywords as well. So uh, this is how it goes. It's like a it's like a triangle. I tell my students. 
Uh, landing page, the quality of the landing page. Of course, higher click-through rates achieved through better targeted uh, a creative copy are rewarded because you have higher click-through rates because your ad copy is very well designed. Your landing page is amazing. Uh, and hopefully also you have extensions and all that. So Google will now uh, sense its ad bots to check them out your landing pages so that you improve your landing page uh, they defending the user so they want the user to have a very good user experience isn't that awesome this is why i say google still cares about their users and they're not doing advertisement the traditional way only with the business only uh, to get money they also want you to land on a page with a high quality relevance to your query Okay, click-through rate here. With the click-through rate, guys, we will have your ads expected click-through rate. This is based in part on your ads historical clicks and impressions, excluding factors that, that has that to do with the ad position or whatever uh, ext uh, extensions, even has nothing to do with the extensions or formats or whatever. But if you don't have a past historical clicks, then Google will uh, uh, pair you up or match you up with similar uh, businesses, businesses of the same uh, characteristics and see what would have been your historical uh, click-through rate. This is why I always tell my students it's very important to do your com competitor analysis. I get disappointed when there is a presentation about the business and there is no competitor analysis. There's not enough slides talking about a close competition in the same industry with the same business model and distant competition so that you can understand your market better and your industry better because even Google takes it into consideration to match you up with. All right. So your last, your display URL past click-through rate is also very important on your website. This is why search engine optimization is also uh, very important and the geography. Relevance is also measured. Typically, the higher the ads quality score, the more relevant it is for the keywords uh, to which it is tied with. So there's keywords, there's an ad copy, and then uh, there's also the search query. So I look at it as a triangle. They all should be relevant to one another. So you can't uh, buy your way through the top uh, because even if your bid is very high, that doesn't mean that you will be able to buy your way to the top because it depends on your quality score. Quality score is very important when it uh, measure when it comes to your ad rank or even you winning uh, the, 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 the auction or even showing on the SERP. The ad text relevance is very important. So this is why uh, sometimes in order to get a very good, very good results, you probably need to run uh, traffic a campaign um, and 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 um, it depends on how wicked you are I mean if you are working as a marketing manager and you say that I have a campaign uh, that the, the goal of the campaign is to drive the traffic only then I would be assessed evaluated as a marketer marketing manager or as an officer a marketing officer not only on the budget that I spend, but also on the return, uh, or let's say on the results. So I, I, the, the smart thing to do is to say part of this budget, let's say 10%, I will first run a traffic campaign. Yeah. So I will, I will say that my estimated traffic, I would like to get a click through rate of 5% of this campaign. If I hit 6% or 5%, then I hit my goal. So I'm a success. I ran a successful campaign. Running a successful campaign for traffic before you run a campaign for sales will help, will help your quality, the, the, the site quality and run, do it strategically. So run your uh, traffic uh, 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 campaign on the same pages. So you can see the estimated traffic and also you can see organically how many people will actually place an order. Then when you are running another campaign to the same pages, even though there is time difference, like uh, the weeks on June are different than the weeks on July, for example, 
who are selling selling the same product. But let's avoid all these uh, uh, all these uh, uh, factors. So given everything equal, let's say, uh, let, then you run another campaign, a paid campaign, and then you have taken advantage of the past click-through rate that you've developed or nourished before you ran the paid campaign. Because paid campaigns, to, to run a successful paid campaign, it depends on uh, uh, maybe not only the click-through rate, but also maybe how many conversions. And then the idea is to find, if I haven't ran this campaign, the paid search, I would have organically got three clicks. So you see why I'm telling also you, it's not like to be wicked or smart or whatever. You really also need to know organically, I would have got from a, a, a traffic campaign, I would have got three orders. Now I ran a paid campaign for sales purpose and I also got three orders. Then this tells me something is up with my strategy, basically with my keyword match, maybe with uh, the strategy. Am I using thematic based on category and value proposition or segmentation uh, or values, value based segmentation? Or is it because I need to shift my strategy to focus on uh, restructure my ad groups based on bidding strategies, for example, and so on. So this is my advice to you practically when you are running these campaigns. So take advantage of the traffic coming uh, before you run the paid search, and then you should actually get more orders. But if you're getting the same number of orders, then probably you might need to consider restructuring. If you want to run one more campaign to reassure yourself, you could do that. But of course, uh, act soon and find out what is it that you're doing wrong. And of course, uh, this is why they say they are, uh, the companies are lacking this skill. I am very highly recommending my students who are doing the entrepreneurial strategy course, especially those who uh, have very little chances of uh, creating a, a whole website uh, uh, easily because they don't have a payment gateway for example in vietnam a very easy going payment gateway in vietnam for you to practice so it, whatever money you invest right now running little campaigns and learning from experience learning strategically from your experience showing evidence that you ran campaigns even if you if, if, if it's a little bit costing you money this means that you have an experience for two years experience or three years experience and this is what businesses are looking for. They're looking for a person that has on his CV, on her CV, uh, uh, usually women are, uh, are very good in marketing, uh, put on their CV that they have two years as a marketing officer in uh, Curious Bebe, uh, two years of work experience in uh, Midori Kitchen for example, as a chief marketing officer or as a marketing manager or, or, or. That does count, that does count. And this is the kind of skill that companies are looking for. They are looking for people with experience, with a practical experience. As you can see now, you forgive me if I can't really run campaigns with you because you really need to spend money. Who's gonna spend this money? I'm gonna ask the students to spend money? Okay, after we spend money, and let's say that you have your digital property, then you have to deal with taxing because you are in, uh, gaining or earning income yeah so what are you going to do with this income you need to pay taxes for the japanese government we're not going to end up like uh, uh guson doing uh, almost uh, what we believe we've done nothing wrong and then we end up in big trouble right uh so in any case i i i just uh, hope that uh, you can see the importance of thinking about everything that we're covering in class on how I can, this is only technical parts. Many people know these technicals, but companies are looking for those who have, uh, who have the, the, the more advanced, not more advanced skills, all this you can learn, uh, but uh, technicalities, but they're looking for more strategic. This is why I really hope that we can couple this class with the entrepreneurial strategy course, and we can have some uh, more workshops for, for with those students, please contact me if you would like to keep going with your previous business and 
register it as self uh, uh, self proprietary or in within a company and they start running campaigns with me I don't have a problem at all helping you in within this kind of uh, uh, where you are protected you're not doing anything wrong and uh, you could learn more about how to be uh, to, 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 to uh, put for or outline a certain digital marketing strategies all right back to our uh, slides a landing page of course you need a unique selling point every one of us needs a unique selling point every one of us for example if anybody can will, will ask you this question in any interview why i should hire you why for example my career now has shifted to marketing i would say because i cannot say because i get the job done uh, in teaching because i could say uh, i could say uh, first of all uh, in teaching uh, I bring in a very positive, uh, uh, let's say, energy into my class. I am always a cheerful. I have a very loud voice, uh, very uh, uh, good communication skills, let's say. Uh, let's also say with teaching, you need the ability to break down very difficult concepts. Uh, maybe in the future, hopefully, guys, pray for me in the future. I'm, I'm planning right now to start uh, this winter, hopefully. To write, to start writing my book, my own book, because maybe this is a unique selling point that I have my own book where I can uh, hopefully take people through the practical side or other teachers, because I would like to be like a trainer of a trainers. Have you ever guys heard of this? A trainer of trainers. Uh, so for you to be a very good trainer, you will be trained to be a trainer. So I am hoping to write this book that could help teachers instructors who are wanting to teach digital marketing and have no clue whatsoever what digital marketing is because they never had a, a, a digital property or ran uh, digital marketing campaigns this is the kind of book i am aiming at a book for teachers teaching teachers <laughs> but no, not not really like that but uh, aiming at a certain book like that this is a very unique selling point why because i surveyed surveyed all books in the industry they are either very very specific in a certain topic, like Google Analytics kind of book, awesome books in Google Analytics, awesome books in here, awesome books in there. What my goal is, is to have one big book that takes you through the very important initial steps in every tool with Google uh, uh, and for digital marketing in general, and very important for teachers because it will have practical exercises students will be able to do things on their own uh, and 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 have like very interesting in class exercises or practical exercises so this is my unique selling point for example as an instructor also the, of course there will be a unique selling point as a uh, as a researcher but this is not my topic now to sell myself to you <laughs> but i do have a, a very interesting uh, way of selling my myself to you that's because we're talking about it anyway and I, I, I would like to inspire you, really. So if anybody asks you, like, why you? And because you guys are young, they usually ask these questions. Like, it's a template kind of questions. I'm going to show you even me at my age now. I still anticipate this kind of questions to be asked. This is an amazing uh, marketing book. I would like to sell myself as a marketer. So over here, I'm going to show you here as a researcher. What I'm going to do, this is my one of my dreams or one of my to-do list in the future. These are all the quantitative methods, research methods in marketing, as you can see on the screen. This is still related to us, yeah, somehow. So here, multivariant methods, factor analysis, latent analysis, uh, like, search, uh, like structure equation modeling. I am now working on a project on that. You know what my dream is? Get this lovely one here. I reproduce it big and put it on my uh, uh, door outside my uh, new campus in 2023, our awesome campus. So I'm going to put this here and I'm going to put a QR code here for my paper. So I'm going to show my students I'm or this is how I'm going to sell myself and cluster analysis. I, oh, in the future, I'm going to I'm going to be I'm, I'm trying to recruit a master student to work with me here. I'm very good at, with, with the cluster analysis, but if I if I don't find anybody to work with, I'm just going to have to um, carry on the project myself. 
So this is conjoint analysis. I used to teach actually conjoint analysis. So I, I, I may be going to have to go back again and, and make a little research paper here in a very good journal, of course, and I'll put the impact factor of this journal. Of course, not all journals are the same. Uh, not all researchers are at the same level, depending on where you publish. So I'm going to put here the impact factor and the QR code of the paper. Here's the impact factor, QR code of the paper, regression and forecasting. I do have already research in there, but why not add more research? Artificial in uh, fuzzy, fuzzy sets. In fact, fuzzy sets here and, uh, and where? I do have. Uh, fuzzy sets. Uh, I do have a paper, but it uses not only f it's fuzzy logic, yeah. So I have something here, so I can add that as well. Uh, queuing, stochastic processes, statistical design theory, game theory. I will say I don't have anything here as of yet. I need to study a little bit more with this uh, decision science, though, and decision theory. I do have a paper that uses fuzzy sets and. Uh, statistical design theory, maybe something like that. Yeah. Mm. Deterministic operations research, linear, nonlinear transportation method. I do have something with marketing modeling here. Uh, over here, artificial intelligence. I'm still working on it. And then, yeah, so this is basically how I would like to. Uh, Path, path analysis, in fact, path analysis here with co causal, ah, path analysis is different than SEM. SEM is here. Ah, path analysis is different. This is one a very interesting, actually, uh, uh, work. Linear structure relations. Maybe structure equation modeling is here, in fact, with this. Maybe I need to reorder this somehow. But yeah, this is, for example, my uh, aim to show my unique selling point as a researcher. I'm going to show that I am a versatile researcher in in marketing, and I show where I published so many different papers in so in papers in so many different topics. Yeah, and this is my unique selling point that I am a very diversified researcher, not only focusing on one area, but I can put multiple here papers in one area, but I also published in different other areas in marketing. So guys, please think about how you can uh, uh, specify your unique selling point. So this is my unique selling point if I had to write a landing page on my own, on myself. And please try to think about yourself right now. What is your unique selling point? See what, what is it that people like about you? You have very good communication skills, very good opportunities, or you've done uh, so much voluntary work, or uh, you've done practical experience with digital marketing. You're an entrepreneur, you created a website, uh, Curious Pebe or a Sleep Teak, and you are still running it, and you successfully been able to generate blah, 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 uh, dollars of sale, dollars, and all that. Image and video here, image and video within the context of the campaign. Uh, yeah, add your infographics. As you can see, I told you I'm going to add this uh, a visual. So add visuals, add images, videos into the, uh, for example, the, the product pages, the landing pages of the product pages of your ad, or ad uh, the, the ad group, for example. Why not add a video of the, uh, of the product there? Benefits of the offering. This is the value proposition. Uh, proof. Usually the customers would like to see reviews, so I maybe can write some uh, take snapshots of some of my uh, evaluation. If, uh, some students write me very nice evaluations and really touches my heart and keeps me going, really. So many days I come to class, you think I'm always happy and I always have to put this smiley face and, 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 and happy uh, um, attitude because this is my job. I have to put on this face. It's my job. So I put the extra effort, but of course, the nice reviews, the nice words given to me, the nice feedback at the end of the semester gives me a push to start the beginning of the, the, the next semester and all that. It, it, does, it does have a very good impact on me and my performance, and also I could use it as a proof as well. Engagement. Why not engage with my students, for example, on my page? Um, for for like how I have uh, an office hour, for example, the office hour, I will I will turn on my chat uh, every time I have an office hour for the rest of my life. I turn it on on my 
uh, on my uh, what do we call it uh, on my uh, blog yeah and of course call to action if I'm selling something so this is an example here yeah on how to uh, sell yourself or have you a unique selling point for your products your services and yourself add extensions we have several ad extensions let me show you an ad extension here so I'm going to show you for example La Roche University and over here you can see that this university in Pittsburgh has different links like that these are extended text and uh, extended links so these are site links so we call these site links they look like this so if you search for our beloved university in Japanese you will see different site links as you can see here for admission it's a quick shortcut it's a it's a deep link it's a deep link in our link into our website for the academics the admission for the tuition for the student life and uh, for even admitted students what do you do from there also images of our beloved university hopefully we're going to go to the new campus we're going to move to the new campus in 2023 and we'll have even more and more beautiful pictures of beautiful people like yourself and uh, 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 premises now let's take a look at what happens Ta -da! what happens when we do a tokyo international university for example e-track Oh wow, I am so lucky. Now the eTrack program, as you can see here, also has uh, the uh, site links. Mm. Did I take a snapshot of how did it look like before? I wonder if I did. I never, I never did. Actually, one time, I, oops, oops. One time I was looking for, how about without the eTrack? So you can see here Tokyo International University in English, Tokyo International University in English only without the e-track, they missed it. it. Doesn't have site links. But if you take Tokyo International University like this in Japanese, it does have site links, as you can see also in Japanese. But Tokyo International University without e-track does not have it. This is probably um, this is kind of problematic indeed yeah all right so what are these these are also links they take you to admission right there so what are these these are automated automate automated site links Google trying to help us. Google is very good to us. It, it cannot do the work for us because it cannot make a description here for us as well. You have the link over here and then you have the description of the link. You have the link over here and then you have the description of the link, right? But Google can't do all the work for us. So it's just going to add the links without a description based on the uh, pages with the highest traffic. Yeah. That's awesome, isn't it? This is automated. This is, you haven't set it up. Probably the university uh, should consider setting it up. Uh, however, in fact, it did set it up for the e-track. University set it up for the e-track. But Google is helping the university because if somebody here is searching for Tokyo International University, then, well, they will automatically generate these. You see? okay so these are site links we call them so if you have a website please add your categories as site links here and call outs call outs here are for um brick and mortar no sorry i'm stopping myself here okay wait a minute guys i'm so sorry <laughs> you have a local business let's say this is not related to this uh, slide you have a local business and you would like to receive calls to your pizza shop. We call this, you have to create on the campaign level. When you create a campaign, you create a campaign with the goal in mind to receive phone calls. Let's see if I'm still there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, I, I was about to do the 
Ah, here, here. No, 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 no. Here we are. Here we are, guys. Oh, man, I was here. Get more calls. So this is your advertising, advertising goal. This is your campaign objective. If your campaign objective is to get more calls, this means that you are not having an e-commerce site. You are a pizza shop. So you write here, pizza Nora, uh, say selling pizza or whatever. Then next you have to put your website. If you have a site, uh, you see, I made a mistake again. This is not local business. I think there's something else, a Google local business. Here, do you see? This is for local business. I'm really sorry, guys. Get more visits to your physical location. This is for your physical location. And then, then you have to put your website for your physical location also. Wow. So even if you would like to get more calls or uh, get more visits, to use Google, you need to have a little website. So get more website sales or signups. That will be here where you can start your campaign. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Just to make sure that this is not this. This is not the calls, the call campaign over here. It's not receiving calls. If you want to receive more calls, go to the creating a new campaign and your goal is creating more calls. This is not calls. This is called call outs, call outs. Okay. Call outs. So call outs give you more space to add text. What kind of text? For example, you, uh, you have an e-commerce store and your uh, value propositions or unique selling points is, uh, free shipping, uh, and uh, you have, uh, extended sizes uh and uh, then you would like to also feature uh, some promotions or encourage the customers to uh, visit your site so you talk about that you have a new arrivals so this is for existing customers we have something new for you we have new arrivals here so new customers would be like oh okay they have something new and for new customers you have some discount now for a new customer discount, I don't like this strategy. Really, I don't like this strategy, guys. Uh, it has happened to me. I went to SoftBank here in Japan, and then I was like, okay, I would like to renew my 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 uh, contract, and then I don't get a discount. While if I am a new customer, I will get a discount. So I go to the next booth, and the next booth is uh, what is it? Uh, the competitor? What are, what I what are they called? Uh, SoftBank and what? Whatever competitor, I uh, just escaped me the name. So they also have a discount for a new customer. Then I could just switch, but I didn't squ switch because I, I barely have time to, to do the whole process all over again. So basically this is very, very bad to put it out in the open like that. You should make it very discreet because then existing customers will be like, well, why shouldn't I get a discount? So I would say communication is the key. Whenever your customer come in, it come in, you just say, uh, you know, you got a discount when you just started with us uh, as a customer uh, four years ago and we gave you 20% discount. Remind the customer that they actually got a discount. If they haven't got a discount, you probably probably need to make to have a hybrid strategy and tell the customer, you know what, when you joined us, you never got a discount as a new customer. We're going to give you a discount now. Then I want to switch to, uh, what was it? God, I forgot the name. Uh, I forgot the name, guys. I don't know. I'm getting older. It's too much sugar these days. This is a problem. Too much sugar these days. I'm going to go back to healthy food. All right, so these are call-outs. Call-outs are important because they give you more space to write more text. So over here, it looks like that. It's not a clickable. It's not a clickable. It's not links. It is just text, all right? So this is the difference between this lovely people and, sorry, and this, if you guys remember, in Tokyo International University, Google has to generate this automated, automated site links, these automated site links, yeah? So these automated site links are links, links. These are not links. These are just text. 
So pay attention to that. Other site links are structured snippets. Uh, so these to highlight the specific aspects of your products and services in your ad. Uh, for example, you can have destinations and then columns and put Hawaii, Costa Rica, and South Africa. This is what I told you. For example, you can provide services in certain destinations, then why not add that in there as a structured snippet so that you don't get useless clicks uh, you pay for. Uh, beyond the three extensions, Google Ads offers uh, uh, many more beyond these three different extensions, which is the call outs and the site links and also the structure snippets. There are others like uh, like geography here uh, to promote your local business uh, for holiday sales, uh, to get calls from prospect customers, for example. All right. So here is where the structure the snippet extension will look like. So The, this this part is the call out. Nike official site. It's it's horrible. Nike of free returns for members. Yes, free returns for members. Styles, men, women, kids. So here you can actually feature your uh, also uh, categories. And here is your brands. For example, here Nike sale, Nike running shoes, Nike uh, joyride or air. And here you have for men's, women's kids. So uh, this is the kind of things that you, you would like to see how you, you would like to go around it. Now, you're probably asking, let me check the time. I am now recording for about 45 minutes. It's too much, too much for you guys. Next time in class, I'm going to go all over this again very quickly. And I will explain to you, but this is kind of outdated. This is not real. This is exact. This is completely not real, but this is something that we used to understand how Google ranks the website so that you will have a better understanding here, guys, uh, how, how Google ranks the websites so that you will understand it's not all about money and you cannot buy your way up. Anyway, uh, enough for now. I talk too much. I'm so sorry for you guys. I'll see you on Tuesday.